Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and this is Angling Escapades. Hi and welcome to Angle Escapades, uh, you join me at base today. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be preparing some bait uh, to take with me down to the river to do a bit of pre-baiting uh, in readiness for a few sessions we've got coming up. Um, I like to do that at this time of year, um, use up some, some old bait, recycle bait. Um, I save everything uh, when I'm out match fishing, whether I'm on commercials, rivers, whatever. Save everything, freeze it uh, and you'll be amazed how far that can go. Um, I've got different ingredients ready to go and I'm going to show you how you can make up a relatively inexpensive mix out of, uh, out of recycled bait uh, and that's good enough to take to the river, put in a few pegs and just create a bit of food in the, in the peg and a bit of activity. It doesn't have to be uh, top quality bait or anything like that, just something that's going to go into the river and attract some fish. These fish don't don't mind if it's recycled uh, and then what I tend to do then is you use your you know I've got plenty of other baits um, you know sort of fresh bait to use when we actually go on our session but it doesn't have to be fresh bait and it doesn't have to be fancy particle mixes or what have you for pre-baiting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a few things out of the freezer um, things that I've saved and uh, we'll have a look at what we can use okay so um, firstly uh, I've got okay, there's some, there's some luncheon meat there they were cubes, I think they're about 10 mil cubes. Okay, I think they were from the end of the last season, back in March, okay? Just like some hemp in there as well. So just a little bag of meat, that can be used, that can be defrosted. I've got some, uh, I've got some those are some micro pellets there. Now those I've been using on a commercial when I've been method feeder fishing, uh, soaked up micros, um, so they've had water added. Now a lot of the time I'm just chucking those away, but as you can see, I've frozen those. Those will defrost out, and those can be added. Those will give a real nice little particle. Barbel, chub, anything will eat these. These are fish meal. So those go into a mix. So again, another little addition there. Um, now I've got various other things in here. Some, uh, some dead maggots there, some dead red maggots. I've got some casters as well. Now casters actually, Okay, although after freezing they're not necessarily um, great for hook baits, I find that Barbel absolutely love frozen casters. I've used them many times and um, uh, had great success with them actually. You need to buy a bit of fresh fresh bait for the hook if you're using casters on the hook, but as feed bait, Chubb and Barbel, they love a frozen caster. So there's those uh, dead maggots, some casters, and I think that's it. I've got some hemp here, tub of hemp there. Now that was, again, from uh, February March time which I've just you know after a session I bought back frozen down and that should have all the juices in it as well so when this defrosts there should be lots of juices and that's an important part of the mix that I'm going to get together so I'll get that defrosting and that should make up a real good part of our mix uh, aside from that don't think there's anything else don't think we need any of these this time of year um, so that's it so I've got a nice selection of, of bait that I'm going to recycle and I'm going to show you how to turn that into a mix and bulk it out so you can put a plenty of bait and hopefully I can fill up this bucket to take down the river and really uh, get some get some bait into some pegs. So we'll wait for this to defrost and we'll come back to it later. Okay right so this has been defrosting all day so I've got loads of ingredients here now which I'm just going to sort out just get rid of some of this moisture left in the defrosting process. So I've got lots of goodies ready to go in this mix. Everything's thawed out properly. And obviously through freezing, it means that everything's kept its flavors. Okay, so let's start. Micro pellets, okay, these are the ones that I've been using on a method feeder when I've been commercial fishing. And you can see after they've been frozen and defrosted, they've just gone real fluffy. There's a pile of them going in. 
Now they'd have just been chucked in the water after a match if I was uh, if I wasn't recycling. So they go in, and literally this is easy casters. Look how good those casters are. They've been in the freezer for a couple of weeks there. There's nothing wrong with them. You could probably still just about use those on the hook. To be honest, after you know if they're in there for months, then they tend to sort of go a bit darker and what have you. But you can see the you know the the centers of the cast are still there still crunchy fish love those nothing wrong with those you could probably just get away with using those on the hook although what you'll find because the cast has been is been dead for a while now obviously once the air gets to them they deteriorate quickly so you're better off using frozen casters for your feed fresh ones um fresh ones for for the hook now a few bits of meat there okay now these, this say so this is back from March time, I think, on the river. Still, still good. A few bits of hemp in there where it's come off the side tray as well. So all goes in. And we've got our hemp, which has now it's defrosted. You see, it's still got all that liquor and juice. Still smells as fresh as you like. Okay, and all that's just going in. Okay, still a bit frozen, that is actually, but soon breaks down. Okay, so there's a right pile of particles in there now. And when I mix all that around, okay, just a real goody mix. It's a bit cold actually. Now, as I say, this is this process is about recycling bait, really. We don't want it to be an expensive process. But it's up to you. If you've got bait to add to it or fresh bait and you want to put some in. So um, for this, because I'm going to use quite a lot of bait, I've got a lot of pegs to feed over the next couple of days. So um, I want to put bait in. So I'm going to put another tin of hemp in. Okay, just a nice fresh tin of hemp. But you don't have to do this. This is just really to bulk it out for me. Okay, so lots of juice in that as well. Okay. I'm also, again, it's all about the juice, sweet corn, great bait for most species as well. So there's more juice going in and basically the more, the more you want to feed, the bigger mix you want, the more juice you want going in there. So that's why the hemp, you can, you can soak hemp up, um, even at this stage you could, add, you could add some water into there, okay, just to juice it up. And there's so many flavours and, and different, you know, sort of juices coming off that. You don't really need to do much to it. If you're that way inclined, you could add some glugs, bits and pieces, things like that. But I don't think there's any need. Pellets. I'm going to be using sort of halibut pellets through the season. So I might just drop a few of these in. But not too many. You don't want to waste. What you don't want to do is waste all your good bait on pre-baiting. You want to keep this stuff for, for your sessions. Okay. So again, just... So there's all kinds of flavours there, so it's getting the fish, when you're feeding this into the peg, it's getting the fish used to seeing different baits, so they're not strangers. Bear in mind, the fish at this time of year, we're not into the season yet, so the fish haven't seen any bait, anything like this really, for, for three months. So if you go there and sort of put it straight in um, and fish over it, they might be a bit wary of it, but if you put it in a couple of days before and they've seen a bit of this, look all those goodies in there, okay? You've got a chance, you've got lots of varieties of hook baits there. So it'll give you give you a chance of, of drawing fish into the swim. Now, this is the key bit now, okay? Because that's a nice particle mix and you could throw that in and it would go everywhere and that. But you want something that's quite simple to use on the bank and simple to feed. So what I do now is I add ground bait to this. Now, rather than using, um, you know, my sort of favourite mix or the most, you know, an expensive bag of ground bait, all I do, and most of us do this, I've got a half bag of ground bait there, probably a third of a bag of ground bait there. These are ones I've been using on commercials doesn't matter fish they've got fish meals most of the fish we're fishing for all of this so I just add a bit don't add it all to start with because all we're looking to do is bind it now obviously the more juice you've got in here the more you're gonna the more grain bait you're gonna need and the more particles you're gonna need more grain bait to to make it all bind but just keep adding bits at a time and it's the same with just mixing normal grain bait you know it will absorb more of the juices as you as time goes on Okay, but that's starting to stodge up quite a bit now. So just add a bit more, and add a bit of the other, shall we? We'll use up this bag. 
like I say, it's all recycling. You're not doing, you're not using your your best bait for this fairly simple process. And now it's sort of becoming a bit of a sludge and binding up. And as as the ground bait's taking on more more of the moisture, it's stiffening up. really now starting to form into you can start forming it into balls now if I was fishing at close range I could throw that throw that in and that would actually just about sink to the bottom and then break down over a slow period of time especially at the moment we've got plenty of water on the river so it doesn't harm to have it a bit stodgy and, and bring down now I think I'll probably add a little bit more ground back to that It doesn't you see how much it doesn't take a lot of grain bait to bind it you see so you're not I say you're not using lots of lots of brand new articles now people will tell you about different mixes and you know these fancy baits and different you know different particle mixes and flavors for pre-baiting and that I don't think it gets much better than that there is everything in there and all that's just going to break down hit the bottom get those fish mutching around, get them used to those flavours. You put a couple of balls in this, in each peg before you go, a day before you go, or a couple of days, weeks before, if you want to keep, if you've got that much bait. But that's perfect recycling of bait. And I can take that bucket now. I can leave that overnight. It's not going to go off overnight or anything. I can put the lid on the bucket. And I can take that down to the river in the morning, feed some pegs up. And that's going to hopefully catch me some fish. But the main thing is, is as you see, I've, I've still got ground bait left there. I've not used my my good bags, my full bags. I've still got all my ingredients, and you know the stuff I've put in there, the things I've added. You know, hemp you can soak yourself, sweet corn, lunch and meat, all stuff out the freezer. It's a recycled mix, inexpensive but very effective. So in the morning we'll get down, put some of this in, and hopefully catch some fish over it. Two nights ago I came down put some bait in the river was a lot higher than actually it's dropped off nicely We've got some color in the water still um, the river looks nice now a couple of days into the season I think anyone's fished these pegs so I'll put me bait in nice and quietly so what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna drop a bit of bait in a couple of pegs I've only got a couple of hours so drop some bait in a couple of pegs and then fish and just go about it nice and quietly okay uh, now what I've done tonight with the bait Okay, so I've just basically you've done a, a bit of a goodie mix, but this time what I've done is narrowed it down. So all I've done is use the same grain bait as we used last time, but I've just put some chunks of meat that were left over from the weekend, okay, and some hemp. And I'm just going to use chunks of meat on the hook. I'm going to break these down. Very simple. Got a very simple set setup. Minimal tackle today. The biggest problem I'm probably going to have is these boys. Okay, they wind Monty up. And they make a noise okay so we're going to try and avoid those but um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put a couple of balls of ground bait and the goodie mix in here and then move upstream do the same and fish a couple of pegs and see what we can come up with perfect we're at the first peg we're going to fish tonight keep you nice and quiet on the bank because it's such a small river this is a river lug and uh, it's an intimate river and if you make a lot of noise on the bank um, you're heading for failure so I like to keep nice and quiet creep up on the pegs put a bit of bait in step away give them a bit of you know to not put too much pressure on the peg so I'll put a bit of bait in here now I've left it sort of 20 minutes or so so all I'm going to use on the hook tonight is meat okay keep it nice and simple then don't confuse matters and I'm just going to tear off chunks like that a nice size size four hook there okay I'm just going to a nice chunk in there just feed it through and just have the point coming out the other side okay big baits okay there's no point in messing around could be a chub or a barbel here so and all I'm fishing nice simple rig okay it's got a size 4 hook 
six pound leader. I've got a three swan shot link, a traditional. Okay, and those uh, those are slightly spaced as well. Just gives them a little bit of purchase on the ground because there's still a bit of flow on. Okay, and you just want them to hold up. You just want them to follow the current round and just hold up. Um, you know, just where the where the where the flow just sort of eases up on the inside. Okay, and that's just free running, free running, three shot, three swan shot link. Okay, to a little buffer bead. Okay, and a size four hook, and that's it. Nice and simple. Okay, so we'll have a cast now. It's just a little gentle underarm swing that into the flow. So can we just let that come round? Okay, right at the bottom. And then we wait. And it's just bouncing round now. Nice and gently. And it will it will just ease off, it'll just find its spot where the flow just eases off and there's a nice slack on the inside here. There we go, the tip's slackened off a little bit now. So I know that's holding on the bottom. Not using hair rigs or anything, just the proper traditional, just a size four hook, big piece of me. So we'll have to strike at the bikes, you know, it's uh, this is how I used to fish years ago. I fished like this when I was seven years old, you know, so it's uh, it doesn't change, you know, fish still feed the same. And as long as you, your rigs are right and your, uh, your setup's right, you've got a chance. Isn't that right, Monty? There we go then. Well, you can see it because it's getting dark now, but it's taken to the edge of darkness. But we have finally caught ourselves a chub. Now you can see that. Big fish as well, lovely clean fish, about four or five pounds. Back in back. So there you go then. Right on the edge of darkness now. Probably got another 10-15 minutes fishing. At the moment I've got the rod tip up into the air so I can still see the silhouette. No need for bite alarms or isotopes or anything like that. You can see everything you need to see. But it just goes to show that even with colour in the river, um, these fish are still wary. This is a very underfished river um, and it gets ravaged by cormorants and otters and all kinds. And even so, you can see the chub we have was in perfect condition. But they've only really come out to play with the lights faded, so obviously our pre-baiting that we did has obviously got them used to a bit of bait going in. I don't think it's done any harm at all. Um, 
the very least it's gotten them used to feeding in this little area so um, I think it's been a worthwhile exercise and it's only a couple of hours fishing after work you know it's not uh, in current travelled light minimal bait bill bit of hemp bit of meat we've had one little leak up and I think I think now we'll get another bite now I think it's the now the lights obviously go in they're obviously getting more confident so I wouldn't be surprised if we get one more bite but I think on the, these little rivers you, you've got to put the work in you can fish them very quickly and um, you know you can get you can get good results but it's worth putting that little you know that little extra little trip in just to get some bait in a couple of days before and you know there'll be fish at some point we'll be here waiting for it We just had a little tap then actually. So yeah, it's a little goodie mix. Recycle your bait. Get down the river. Just chuck it in a few pegs. Doesn't have to be accurate, doesn't have to be doesn't have to be a, a, a wonderful, you know, all your just top expensive mixes. Nice simple bait bill. Freeze all your recycled bait. And you'll have a chance of some good fishing. <laughs>